if it's on now. All right, we got the camera going. I got the camera. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, welcome everybody to the March 14th uh, Marion County Commission meeting. We'll begin with public forum. Is there anyone online that'd like to make comments? Second call for public comments. Last call. All right, we'll move into agenda approval. Uh, I would like to add an item for an executive session for potential real estate acquisition at the end. Do we need any other executive sessions? Yeah, I probably should do okay. uh, a short one on potential litigation. Okay, and also an executive session on potential litigation at the end of the agenda. Any other changes? If not, it looks like we have agenda approval. Um, we have some Administrative items get yes. started. All right, first we have the minutes from March 7th. Okay, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes of March 7th? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion to approve. Can <laughs> Okay, Commissioner Dolphy has a comment. I second it. Okay. Uh, we had a motion by Commissioner Gehring and a second by Commissioner Dolphy. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Aye. Carried. 5 0. There's also a couple of them in there that you need to sign again. $1,962.04. Any questions? Okay, do we have a motion to approve early checks in the amount of $40,962.04? So motion by Commissioner Gehring. Is there a second? I'll second it. Commissioner Crowfoot, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carried by the Oh, I'm not the only audience. 
Todd Wilson. We started off with a green. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. Oh, well, I had two. I had the wrong one. I didn't know I had a green one. All right, next we have a salary sheet. Okay. All right, this is in Road and Bridge. A salary change for Katie Zercher. It's a new hire administrative, 2300 effective March 8th, new administrative specialist. Okay, next we have all right. Okay, we have the equipment lease agreement that needs signed uh, for the lease purchase from that Joe Gatter. Lease purchase. Uh, it's for the two graders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a lease purchase uh, for the two used fat. ones. Mm -hmm. Used ones? Uh, no, check. these were the ones. That, these are the new ones. These are the new ones. Okay. Print is smaller when they're new. This is so small you can't read it. So it's a total amount of seven thousand seven thousand seven hundred fifty-four thousand five hundred fifteen dollars and forty-two cents. That's with uh, Community National Bank and Trust. Uh, do we need a motion for a chairman to sign? A motion for chairman to sign. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Gehring, and I have the chairman to sign. Second. Second by Commissioner Becker. Any further discussion? Aye. If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried by vote. Seven. Seven. Yeah, I don't know. We can probably spell my name and then we have my life. Just spell it just like that. Yes, that at that point is on here. Okay. Randy, Randy, we quit. We quit. We keep muting you because you got background noise. Okay, I'll uh, I'll mute then. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other administrative other than the financial statements and insurance? Those are just the only two things. All right. I'd ask that we uh, defer those to the end of the meeting so we can move into the the tour. Some of them. Okay. I don't think it needs to. Don't need a motion. It's just me. You can run it how you want. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. I don't remember that. So, at uh, uh, Matt's here with Fire District Number Two to look at some rescue equipment. And do you want to say anything before we go outside? Or um, yeah, maybe come, so. Come over to the, the microphone, please. Sorry. <clears throat> Yeah, so um, this is the purchase that you guys approved at the end of last okay. year. Um, the rescue fund that's in your guys' budget every Good. year. Um, that combined with the monies from our own personal Marion County number two, uh, we purchased these tools. Um, they're out front. Um, I'm one of those guys that believes in accountability with two cents or $200,000. So I figured you guys might want to see what you spent money on. Appreciate so, it. We yeah, appreciate you're welcome it. to so come out. At this point, we'll step out to look at the equipment. We'll be back in the room at 1 o'clock. Are we going to bring the camera along? Or? We'll bring that one. Okay. But I don't think we can bring it. Right. Mm -hmm. We will bring a camera along. So say we'll be back at 1. We'll be back in the room. Matt, some of those things aren't on the table anymore. I thought it was just like a garage sale. Oh, no, I so see. Yeah. In the yeah. yeah. car, you'll find a couple of them. I'm a little nervous already. You know, yeah. there's, there's that many dollars sitting out there. This most, conference is no longer being recorded. recorded. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But when I went down to Wichita all the time, I'd have just a truckload of wire, and then I'd just take boxes, like old 
trash boxes and stuff. Oh. You just throw them all over the top. Yeah. And then it looks like you got a bed full of trash. Joe. And they won't bother you. I thought you were going to say they took all the junk. No. And that's how you get the pickup thing done. No. <coughs> Uh-oh, we got a message. Who's got the message? I'm not sure. Who's, who's messaging? Uh, no, it was Randy saying he's at home feeling like doodah. Oh. Oh, what? All right, everybody's here, so you want to go ahead? Okay. Man? So yeah, um, this is approximately, I think it was $29,000, $28,000 uh, combined with the rescue funds from you guys and the money from Marion County number two. We purchased these three cordless um, sets of rescue equipment. Basically this here um, is the classic JAWS. Um, they're all battery powered, have about uh, six hours of life, of actual run time for battery. And these spreaders here, spreaders, pinchers, um, used in various ways when we get into uh, vehicles or farm equipment. Um, the next item that your money paid for is this hydraulic ram used for lifting primarily. And I believe there's about a 48 ton capacity on these. Actual batteries we're running. Uh, 25. Uh, bolt just stacked. Yeah. And then these are the cutters. So you cut that already. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, did that this morning just to make sure all the batteries worked and everything. That's to be the biggest advantage of the thing is the battery. The battery, yes. cordless, yeah. dragging them hoses on the hydraulic thing. It's just a nightmare. Before it took three people to carry the hydraulic unit because we had usually about a five horse Briggs plus the pump in the unit and then another guy to actually carry the tool. Mm -hmm. These are all one man. I mean, they're not right, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. All built with lights too. The other ones have got lights yeah, too. Yeah. 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 And they've got little battery indicators and then they have uh, tilt indicators. Um, oftentimes if you're not perfectly at a 90 degree angle, it'll want to bind. And so, um, the little tilt light will come on and then it will show you how to shift it for a better cut. So, um, waterproof right. Yeah, waterproof down to 11 feet. That's as far as deep as the uh, NFPA tank is. So, um, yeah, so we can use them in the ditch and not worry about issues and so basically, um, it's a new, it's the Gen 3 of the Hearst brand, which is the newest type, the newest generation of uh, tools for rescue and extrication. The, uh, we're running into, I mentioned this to uh, Commissioner Becker a little beforehand, but we're running into unique items in the rescue world now. There's a lot of metal alloys out there like even have carbon fiber going into the metal now and some of those are actually lighter than aluminum but a lot stronger and so these will help help deal with those and then another challenge that we're facing on the rescue side of things are electric vehicles um, some of the new like the hummers and some of the bigger suvs take up to 7,000 volts and there is no federal government. Okay, so I'll back up here. So each vehicle has a positive charge line from the batteries to the electric motors that you do not want to cut. I mean, that is number one no no. Um, the federal government does not have any standards on marking those lines and any kind of color or printing on them. Um, it's kind of the wild west yet, 
And so when we go to extrication, that's one of those important things we have to think about. Um, one of our firefighters is a mechanic there, Brent Abraham's there on the highway. And the last six, eight months, he's been taking pictures of the different electric vehicles he's worked on. Like Ford, the line is red. Honda, it's blue. Um, <laughs> Kia, yeah. it's got a foreign symbol on it for do not cut. And so that's that's some of the challenges we face. But um, thought they would all come together. Some yeah, yeah, that would. That. <laughs> One instance where some government regulation might have been help, helpful, no. but they choose to do other stuff. So, uh, so yeah, this is what your money, your money bought. Um, we'll build a fire district money, and um, our next step is to build custom brackets to mount these in the truck. And uh, yeah, we will slowly get geared up then to be a, a primary rescue for the county. Yeah. Feel free to. Yeah, you guys want to lift them and run them. Got that food there. The kid's going to hold his hand out for you to try. <laughs> we have a clevis that fits in here. We can put a chain on. Oh, yeah. Pull stuff out. Cool. I still can't believe uh, how nice that is about uh, having all the things that are very good. They're not live. <laughs> yeah, but what it will cut. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. That's, that's still the weight versus what it will cut. Amazing that little thing can weigh how many tons? Uh, I think they're rated about 45 to 50 tons. That's crazy. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a big cylinder on the just the light feature on it too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Able to see. But at night you can't see. Okay, so you're on right there and then you just turn that. Every two years, we have a good relationship with a tow truck company out of Newton. They bring up a few cars for fire practice and they cut it and they start chewing apart on it. How long has it got to be a real thing? Right. So, right. How long the shears last? Yeah, that's, it all depends on what metals you're cutting. Do they make the placement so you can pop them? Yeah. So, and you can actually be sharp. <laughs> I wasn't getting, I wasn't just being a wuss. <laughs> it's heavy. About, about to need the hoses on the back just to counterbalance. You can wedge this apart. Oh, okay. That's nice stuff. So, yeah, thank you guys for thank you. approving thank you, man. the furniture. So. Thank you for coming back and showing it to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't have any idea they were that compact. Yes. <laughs> this conference will now be recorded. All right, we're back at the commission chamber, so we want to thank Matt both from Fire District 2 for a very good, very interesting uh, demonstration of the rescue equipment. It'll be a real asset to the county, and we appreciate the work they've done to, to get that equipment put together. Again, it'll be very, very valuable to the county. So we'll move into our next item on the agenda, Sharon, with planning and zoning. Okay, so during my department business, I'll discuss the annex building proposal. Also with me are Travis from the EMS department. Um, the commissioners asked us to assess the building as it is and see what kind of updates 
would be needed for the planning and zoning department to move into that building. So um, I'll pass these around. One. Is that the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. I think I already I or have okay. it. Well, Perfect. Um, Make sure it's the same. Yeah, can I wrap it up? It'd be the first item that's different. Oh, it's the same. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Does Randy have a copy of this also? No. Okay. Leave one here. It's pop. Randy, I apologize. We'll get a copy of this to you. So there are two categories on this proposal. The first being what would need to happen, and then the second being requests that would be in addition to that first category. Um, a sink installation for lab use for our environmental lab which I think there's a sink area in the utility room. We might just need to update what we, sorry, Go ahead. Sharon, I, <clears throat> yeah, I'll come over here with you. Uh, late development. Um, so we were looking at uh, access issues, getting to the plumbing, that kind of thing. Um, after further inspection, um, that building is built on a slab. Um, so it would be a matter of cutting concrete to get the sink where where you would want it, which is is completely doable. Um, it's if, if we get down to the carpet area, we're going to be doing. We'd like to be doing carpet anyway, so um, I think we would still want to try to put that sink where you originally wanted. Okay. Okay. So does that make sense? The the building as it sits apparently is on <coughs> a slab. We thought maybe there was a crawl space under there. We dug through floor plans from the 1960s and found no access to that crawl space. We've looked around the building and we've checked the floor everywhere that there could possibly be an access and haven't found one. Mm -hmm. So and then we figured out why, uh, because there is no crawl space. It is it is truly a filled area and then a slab board on top. So. So all the ductwork and the plumbing that's existing was put in place, and then the building was built over the top of it. So ideally, a sink would go in a more open area when you turn right from the entrance in that building, but if that's not feasible, there is a utility sink in the maintenance closet. It would work. It's not ideal, but it could work for what we need. So the request would be to get estimates for both options? I think so. I think yeah. that would be a good idea to and then, both. Then you know which way to, to go. Yeah. Right. I think you need to probably go with the original ideal because probably in the future you're going to need more stuff. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. you need to build for the future. Yeah, it probably wouldn't hurt to put a duct system in rather than even worn it back. And just have to put a duct, put a chamfer for a duct over there. Mm -hmm. Right. into the mechanical room and you could have separate divided access ways for electrical plumbing right and then the carpet would cover it so it didn't matter sure good you just add more dollars to it well no actually <laughs> but, uh, to, you'd still have to cut it to put your plumbing in right mm -hmm. so if you just maintain that cut and that ditch with a duct right you wouldn't spend the money on concrete backfill yeah it's the ductway may still be more expensive right. but well if you ever had to access it again in the future you'd it'd have much it. easier to do if you had that duct yeah. right okay. so that's kind of the <clears throat> the tricky one there I would say <laughs> um, Travis and I went on a wild goose chase looking for floor plans the other day yeah we did find them yeah just didn't show us what we wanted so there would be a fairly small cost in getting the planning and zoning phone line set up in that building um, if we're not able to do that in-house i think that the the company that we contract with has a small fee that would be needed to set those up you have your own phone system there's a phone system in the building already that connects with the courthouse 
We have the same kind of phones, but it would just have to be updated to show our planning and zoning phone number and our extension. Just configure the program. Right. Yeah, and they had uh, a separate phone system from the courthouse and, and ours in the extension office. I mean, it was a, through Vive or somebody else. It wasn't a traditional phone line like ours. So, well, there's two systems now. Correct. On your side now. Um, installing window blinds in two offices, that's pretty straightforward. <laughs> we need new business signs to indicate that planning and zoning and environmental health department is at that location. Interior paint throughout the building, um, that building we believe to be constructed in 1960 something, has not had a lot of updates <laughs> since it was constructed. Um, and along with that, carpet, it has kind of an industrial carpet in the building right now. It's seen a lot of wear and tear uh, to be, you know, visually appealing to to the public that may be coming into the building. We think that some fresh paint and some carpet would would serve it well, um, and it it might also help with some sound barrier or some some acoustic issues over there too. Carpet squares. Yeah, we have room in one spot, pull it up and put it back. Yeah. Where, where yeah. everybody's going. Yeah. 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 You've got to re access that duct. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's the way <laughs> Definitely a good option. Um, LED lighting throughout the building. The, the building itself has the fluorescent fixtures right now. And in some of the rooms, there are 16 fluorescent <laughs> light bulbs in a room half the size of this room and then in other rooms <laughs> yeah and then in other rooms are maybe one or two lights so yeah. right here so we're just requesting that that be updated it would also help in the long run because those LED lights are much more efficient mm -hmm. yeah. They now make an inserted unit that I just got the bid on for my other office. And those things are much cheaper. Basically, you don't have to change half of this, these. Mm -hmm. It just goes, it's been set up to, to work those, plus they have adjustments so that each one has an individual dimmer oh, on okay. it. And they're still not that cheap, but mm -hmm. they're a lot less expensive than replacing the whole unit and going to an LED. But they are LEDs. You've got 1960 lights up there. Yeah. Find it too, and he said these yeah. will work. So. You know when you go to have to change out all the old ballasts, it yeah, makes sense anymore. Just electric use savings yeah. over time is going to pay for. It. Yep. Besides the better light. Right. And then there are some bookshelves and cabinets in that lobby area. We'd like to remove those so that we can have more usable space for a shared conference room. And. Um, Travis and I could use that space for uh, smaller meetings when we have people in our offices. Um, that would also help the EMS department out because then people wouldn't have to go in past their... Some of the HIPAA information, computer screens, things of that nature when we have a, uh, whether it be a salesman, sure. you know, stuff like that. We, we have meetings, truck committee. Um, things of that nature. It'll be a good usable space for both of us. Um, and I guess, Sharon, to this point, um, that's that's really what we, we feel we need. Um, obviously, we're, we're going to need to get prices on things. We're going to have to go out for bid on things. Sharon has a timeline, I believe, to get, to get moved over there. So, um, obviously, we, we would need approval to move forward with, with getting pricing and, and quotes, those type of things. But um, I guess before we get there, we can, we can go to the request. And, and that is that building's been used for several different offices. Um, it's made some changes from its original intent. Um, my closet slash office has four doors in it. Um, one of those being a double door that's vented <laughs> um, so if you have a conversation in the conference room, I'm really in your conversation. Um, 
I don't think it'd be a big expense to go in and sheetrock that and close that off to where it's it's not part of the same room. And there's a window between the um, between the EMS side and, and the other that serves no purpose. If you had people in doing sheetrock work at that time, it wouldn't take much more. I don't I don't believe to cover that as well. Uh, it would help acoustically as well for for meetings on either side of the wall. Um, so a little bit of sheetrock work there. Um, it's kind of our understanding that the generator has some conduit going over this direction. Um, I was surprised that they were hooked up. Yeah, so we would like to see what it's it would take. Capacity. Uh, it, it would still be an advantage of having that space oh, yeah. to be able to get on the generator. I think would be good. For sure. Yeah. So, um, the as we talked about the mechanical side of it, the the HVAC system looks more modern than I anticipated. Um, obviously, it's hard looking at the outside, looking just opening the door to know what kind of shape it's in. But there really haven't been any complaints with the the HVAC system, other than the windows on on the east side of the building there by the office manager's desk are what makes it cold. And I'd, I'd have to go back and look, but I think they were replaced between, and Randy might remember, but between 10, 15 years ago, and I don't think they were replaced with a very quality window. And we certainly lose heat and cool through those windows. So again, not something we have to have, but if we're gonna be doing things, maybe now's the time. Uh, I, I think that may have been the issue too. We had initially heard from NRCS or extension, extension. office that um, that system wasn't keeping up real well. It was really hot in one area and then really cold on the other side of the building. But I think what's happening is that those windows are just allowing the heat or the cooling to escape True. too quickly. So then they have to keep the heat cranked up to keep that office warm and then it so you only got one system for the whole building correct mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Two. Yeah. Uh, well and i know why there's no dampers in there because it's running a concrete vault basically a, a chase so the first office gets a lot okay. of heat you know and, and so on um but yeah it's again i think as far as regulating the temperature if we take care of those windows that will go a long way um and then again, as far as mechanical, the water heater seems to be working fine. However, it's circa 1994, which... Yeah, but they don't make them like that. Well, yeah. no, not, the, the next one will never yeah, last as long. Two or three years, I, I, even I, alone. And, yeah. Well, and again, just so it's on a radar is, is the main thing. Um, is there a drain close by? There is a drain close. <laughs> so you know, once you start talking about it, it's bound to happen. But uh, thought we'd bring that to your attention. Um, and then there is a, a cap five rack in there. It's, it's old antiquated stuff. It just needs cleaned up. It's not a big deal, but um, there are a lot of a lot of lines running a lot of places they don't need to be anymore. And that would just be part of the, the general cleanup. Yeah, general cleanup and then everything can be painted. Yes. Yeah. You paint so, both sides. Yeah. yeah. That, would be our, that would be our intent. Yeah. So. I, yeah. the choose your color. There, <laughs> right? And I think that's I think would be the next step is is if you guys wanted pricing on all of this, if you had something you, you know you want to put an X through now or, or whatever, uh, I think we work to get a bid on. I say go out for pricing, my my opinion, and, and try to make it as best. Try to think about it to where it's making it things apples for apples sometimes. Right. People will throw their own spin on something and then they're way cheaper, but it's not what you want to say. Sure. Or just don't allow any options yeah. if, if that's the case. Okay. Is that a motion? We get bids on both the needs and the requests so we can keep them separated. Mm -hmm. but I think each item I think each, yeah, each item is gonna to be in different contractors anyway. So Yeah, I mean we've got plumbers, electricians, sheetrock, right. painters, carpet. Right. Yeah, and I'm on the sink, the, certainly get the bid for doing the, where it needs to be. Right. And then maybe if you 
hoping or the same person do a bit for doing it in the mechanical room. Okay. But uh, to get it where it needs to be would certainly be just just my opinion. I think it needs to go where it needs to be. Yes. Okay. I and I would also request within their bid that they remove that other sink. <laughs> Yes, I, I don't disagree. It's it's grandfathered in right now. I'm just oh, leave okay. that be. Yeah. There you go. We don't That's use that sink. Okay. Very good. So, but that would be my says your motion. That's my motion. Okay. Do the the motion. You need updated go ahead and get pricing. The bathrooms. Well, there's one bathroom. It was added at a later date. It has suspended ceiling in it. Um, Paint <laughs> would be about all it needs. Yeah. I think other than that, it's fine. The water, the water line ran from where it comes in the building up the wall over the ceiling and then down, so that was probably a good indication that. Yeah, we should have things were solid under there. <laughs> solid slab. <laughs> right, we should have figured that out quicker. We were hopeful. But, well, we were built that must have been from the south. <laughs> well, and, and I believe it was 62 was the date on it, and, and it the floods. Before the dike. Yeah, so we, they built it up and made it solid, yeah. so couldn't get flood water under it. All right, so we have a motion from Commissioner Garing to, to get uh, bids on all of the items, the needs, and the requests. Uh, we have a second, so a second by Commissioner Becker. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. He said I. He just his mic went on. Okay, it's five and oh. I want to so. I want to thank you both for getting, for organizing this the way you did. It's the needs and requests, yeah. and the adventure of finding out what's actually in the building. Right. Randy, do you have any comments on it? Well, he's waving. Okay. So do we get bits on like cleaning out the building? Or? Have county employees do it? Oh, the, the, the bookshelf. I'm sorry. Yeah, that is one we, we need to, to uh, put that in a. That's one other thing. There are three bookshelves in there, two of them uh, being six foot by about eight foot tall. Um, those two could come out in one piece. The other one was built in place. I believe it to be eight by eight or a little better than that. Um, Somebody might want them. There has been. That, that has been posed that there, there may be somebody uh, outside, how do I say that, um, non-departmental use. Um, I don't know of any department. We talked about the extension. They don't have tall enough ceilings. They'd be good to be used for something, basically what they're intended for, and that's, that's magazines, flyers, that kind of thing to be on. Today's world, we're not, everything's on a slant, yeah. Um, I guess I would ask that, that we could put those two county employees on a on a sealed bid type thing and get them out of there. Oh, yeah, so that's a shot at okay. If that's, that's a good doable. Idea. That's a good idea. And uh, we'll yep. put stipulation they have to get them out of there by a certain time. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> take them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take them all. And, okay. So days or so. we'll work with Tina when she gets back to do that. That's That'd be great. how it works. There may be someone else. If not, if not, the the transfer station might be there. You go. Yeah. <laughs> Put their items on. Yeah. Thirty more stuff. All right. Thank you again. Thank you guys. All right, Chair. Okay. Um, the next item that I have for today is that on February twenty second, I believe. Sorry, I'm looking through the minutes here to find it. Um, the commission looked at the proposed securities for the Sunflower Link Project, Expedition Link Project, and Mr. Jeans indicated that he would review those proposed securities and issue a written statement indicating that the amounts are consistent. So I guess that's my next item. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and I did that from my perspective in email form, but probably should put something that goes into our file as well. The denominations were fine, okay. which I told you at that time, and then I followed up and looked at 
what they gave us in terms of where these were proposed to be coming from. That's all properly insured, so I think we're okay there as well. Obviously, when they produce them, we have one final, okay, this appears to be properly named and properly um, issued, but they're fine from what I can see. Okay. Do we need a commission action, or is it just um, a matter of writing your opinion? I don't know. The, yeah, probably just, no, I, we should probably go ahead and do an approval in the minutes. I would make a motion to approve the uh, Orsted's proposed securities as they were presented. And we had reviewed them at a previous meeting. Second, second by Commissioner Becker. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Five and zero. Oh. And you will get the uh, yeah. Something in there. Sure, was there something else you still look troubled? You know, that's, I, I think the way that it was in the development agreement was just the, the commission, or that it would meet the commission's expectations. Yeah, and, and I just figured if we do an acceptance yeah. in the minutes, then it has been Very reviewed good. and formally done. Right. And I'll follow up and put that letter probably in your file. Um, so we have that as well. That I looked at it from the county's perspective so that it covers it coming and going. Okay. And then how do you want to, since that's an agreement between the Board of Commissioners and Orsted, who do you want to relay that approval? Do you want that to go through Brad or through I, forwarded to me and then to Orsted? I'm fine either way with that. Um, you've been dealing with them directly, so I certainly have no objection there. If they prefer to have something in writing for me, I'll be happy to do that too kind of doing that anyway by providing it for your father. Okay. So just that the commission approve their proposal and that we they can move forward yes. with obtaining oh, securities. Okay. Okay. Any agreements we do, let's let's get them in writing, so so we don't later down the line don't have problems. Yeah, we have it in writing. It's just a matter. Of okay. Somehow, the right signatures in the right place in the right notification. Because we we reviewed it, we have it in writing. The sheriff's kind of in charge of it. <laughs> well, <laughs> why, don't, why don't we just uh, have have the commission go ahead and allow Brad to do that approval. That's fine. Yeah, that okay. way he can keep, it's keep all of that stuff together and make sure it's filed where it needs to be okay. in the county. And okay, we'll have Brad communicate right. with the commission's approval and copy share right. on all communication. Okay. How's I mean, it means it's a, those are financial documents yeah, also. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Right, and that, I mean, that, was an ancillary agreement that was made between the commission mm -hmm. and the wind project. So mm -hmm. yep. that's that's a good idea, Kim. Brad will communicate the yep. approval. That way, it's all. Make sure we keep copies in our file. Yep. And then we got copies. In yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank all you. right. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. This week, and when they're done, they're gonna let us know. We'll come out, and look them all over, and should be a problem. Nice. Uh, the new ones will be showing up the end of March, first of April, and then by the time they get get them to us, probably a couple days to a week. So first part of April of this year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, got the we did the finally got the information back from Terracon for the geology on um, uh, indigo as well as 190th. Um, indigo basically shows anywhere from two to four inches of um, asphalt. Uh, there's a spot here, six and a half. Um, but down below, I mean, that looked like a basically a break between that and the base below there. The base could be as much as um, cold patch, blade patch, whatever the case may be. But I think it's kind of obvious to see why it's falling apart with the amount of traffic on there compared to the amount of pot mix. So I still think the best recommendation there is just to add more on top of there, like we kind of talked about. But at least basically kind of shows what we have down there. So not a full depth, just, just yeah, just top of it for now, and then. Yeah, it should give us 15, 20 years, I hope, and then... Well, when the last thing was just a chip seal, right? Or uh, what they did two no, years ago? No, that was the that was the two-inch milk uh, yeah. scarification, where they heat it up and then they mix it up and then they wet it back. But the problem is you've got to have something down below there to hold up. I mean, those those big heavy heaters probably weigh, <laughs> I don't know, 80,000 pounds yeah. a piece, and then you heat up that asphalt, it makes it even more pliable okay. down below there. So. No, it's it's. Uh, I think I think that's what Jesse told me the last time that he remembered uh, was like in 2000 was when the last time it had a, a two inch overlay put on it. So you're asking a lot for 20, 22 years for that. So, okay. So um, on 190th, um, we did take some um, cores out there as well. Um, it shows a little bit more asphalt, but honestly, um, I was expecting more. Um, so. What we did on this part of here was just seeing what there is. We actually did just an auger going through there. Uh, I, I actually talked to the contractor and I think we're going to go out and do some cores and actually take a core out so we can see what it's like all the way from top to bottom. Maybe see if the, what the material's like all the way through because they're the same way. They don't want to get down into bad material. Um, typically as you go farther down you'll, you'll get bigger rocks and when you start mixing bigger rocks up with the surface, the smaller stuff, it just doesn't perform real well. So a little bit more investigating there, but I'll get started on the overlay at least for that one. Um, got a meeting tomorrow night that was, uh, I say, thrown together rather quickly. I think the meeting's been scheduled for a long time, but we just found out about it. They're looking to do a Doyle Creek watershed project down on 90th uh, west of Indigo. And so we're going to go into the, the Peabody meeting and it won't really affect us other than um, we have a uh, the NRCS or whatever all of them have sent out a letter basically requesting commission approval um, that basically says that whatever we do for a county we we should not impact whatever they're doing whatever that may be we are a co-worker with them and they just uh, yeah I mean, well, the main thing would be if water would back up into roadways or yes or that what what they're basically saying is they don't want us going in and rebuilding a road or whatever else that may impact the flow into their watershed uh, i'm guessing is that on a named stream um it's well i i'm not for sure it's it's in the doyle creek tributary i don't know what it would be but it basically is uh, about a quarter and a half mile west of indigo all the way from roughly 100th or whatever else south and then the the actual reservoir dam is about halfway between 80th and 90th out in the middle of the field but i can say that sharon i i had actually had heard about it and then sharon had never heard anything about it so i obviously passed it on to her so she said a lot of times that happens with the nrcs they just boom there it is and so, but anyway, I mean, we're, we're definitely going to try to do what we can, but we've had issues with that area down there, flooding and, you know. So, so it may help you a little. If it would. Um, the biggest problem is, is we're still going to have the flows going through our area, but again, that's what I'm concerned about is backing water back up into there. And again, being with the NRCS, I don't know how, if they would be able to help us rebuild or whatever else that's what we're going to find out you know we start mixing government agencies and things like that but anyway that meeting is scheduled down in 
Peabody. Well, the first step is get information. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it just boom, all of a sudden showed up. Yeah. Well, so you'll we'll find out. Yeah. Uh, the uh, cost shares due this Thursday. We're going to um, put that second half in there. Um, do that. Talked about that. The I think I sent everything to you that they wanted to go with the economic development. Um, it's going to be a little interesting how we put all that together, especially if you start bringing in, um, you know, the economic impact to, I say, the church. Well, I mean, with, that's really not an economic impact, but yet it is. And well, they go to town of Pilsen because that's you look at the extra people that may be coming there too. That's you know probably as much as anything. But anyway, so uh, based on what the what was sent to us as well as what the secretary um, has requested. I guess we'll proceed with that yeah. unless there's a problem. So and that's that's the direction they yeah. play this. Yeah. So uh, and then got purple leaf scheduled for a week from tomorrow to come in for our um, uh, graders. Graders, and we're going to get rid of a couple of cups and things like that too. Question has been brought up. Um, talking with the city in the past, they were interested in um, maybe getting a different motor grade. Now they don't use our motor graders near as much sign and theirs is an old galleon probably in the I don't know, 60s, 70s. Do they have to go through Purple Wave or can we sell things outright to them? You can you can sell outright to them. Okay. Um, it's another governmental entity, so there's usually some element of latitude given. Okay. We have it anyway, but um, <clears throat> if we chose because it's another taxpayer oriented yes. entity. We could make an exception for that. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, the reason I'm saying this because it doesn't cost us anything, but people that buy stuff have to pay 10%. 10%. So it does say 10%, which would be a huge amount. But so I guess the other question is how do we come up with a value? <laughs> That's right. the issue. That's okay. where Purple Wave comes in handy because they raise well, the value. Yeah, well, they, yeah, and they, they establish that value. I mean, and. Well, I'm just saying two bidders yes. establish that value. Yes, yeah. But I mean, I, and I don't know whether there would be historical data that we could use. I mean, I, I'm just throwing this out there. Can the cab salesman help you with that? Well, he's going to he's going to say the same thing. It's going to be worth what somebody wants to pay. Yeah. You know. Now, I, again, the price of used equipment is going right. through the roof right now. So, so you're going to say if you can data, come up with some examples that have sold in the last six months, and let that go off of yeah. that, yeah. depending yeah. on the condition. You want to give the city a good deal, but not, well, yeah. but not too good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, uh, the, the best price is going to be what your other grader sell for on Purple Way. Well, it's going yeah. To be the most yeah. Now, granted, it would say mm -hmm. the, the 10% plus there wouldn't be hauling fees, whatever sure. else would be right here. But anyway, if you guys are okay with that, I'll try to come up with something mm -hmm. that would Is work. there any objection? Oh, Randy. Which, which one? Oh, Randy. Hello, Randy. Which one do they want? That's what we're looking at. Well, they haven't decided. Well, the only thing I know. Randy. Okay. Um, if if they was to decide which one they wanted, why not hold it off the auction, off the purple wave, until the others have sold, and then set your price? That's a. I was going to suggest that, except you could have one of those. I don't think we will, yeah, because everything that I've seen from most of the other governmental entities recently, it's gone way above what they anticipated. I was going to say then, what if that gives them an out? Uh, yeah. it, it's if we had a bad day, yeah. you know, because well, we sell these without reserve. But I don't think it's a bad idea. It's just I think the other thing would be to, to contact one of the sales guys. And say, if we s traded this thing into you, what are you going to sell it for? I mean, they're going to have a pretty good idea what it's worth. Well, let's get an idea. Is that, as as Doc recommends, you could still put it on Purple Wave later. Yeah, we could. Right. It, it doesn't cost us and anything, no so cost we can sell it as a separate item if you so choose. Yeah. I contacted other departments to see if they had anything as well. Well, so, I think health department had a vehicle. Well, I sent a message, I haven't heard back. Um, uh, they, they need to get rid of it. Isaac wanted to get rid of the, the bait vending machine or whatever it is, so, oh. so we could put that on there too. So, uh, but anyway, so I will I will check into that, and see what come up with, and like I said, we've at least got till next week if you yeah. want any more information. So. Um, been busy replacing some culverts, uh, crossroad culverts. One of them was on 280th east of uh, Zebulon. The other one we're doing today is on 300th east of Old Mill. Uh, that was a little stone arch culvert that's over top numerous times, only 16 feet wide. So went back in with half river cars on both of them. Um, 
so getting them ahead of time. Um, still got to put a good list of all the other culverts to go in, working on that. But um, I am impressed. We are we are getting some more help. Um, they're entry level right now. Uh, I got a call this morning from a over the road truck driver that is tired of being over the road. So um, for whatever reason that is, uh, we've got some people coming back. Or, so. I had to go make money for a second. Well, you know, I mean, there, for a there, second. Yeah, there are, I mean, and, and I know a lot of my talk to you, that price of diesel is going up. And yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, these independent truckers. Yeah. Just going to get hammered. Not yeah. quite so rosy. I know that one guy said he filled up his tank, it was 800 bucks. And it's like, wow. Damn. You know, yeah. So. Yeah, they had one on TV than a thousand dollars in California. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's good to hear staffing levels are. Well, I, again, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm hopefully optimistic that we can get back up and you know especially when a lot of these new guys we've got to get them in got to get their cdls and and that helps immensely but it's just that whole process so but uh um, like i said they set up to go to classes yet well we're gonna we we're trying to do that thing through the city i talked to roger last week about that and i haven't heard anything back from him i don't know what kind of time frame is maybe if their time frame is later in the year maybe we do send them down to hutch and just do that so um, but um, otherwise, that's kind of been the main thing is just all things around. So, okay. I'm just going to give you a pat on the back. I didn't even have a chance to call you on 115th in the culvert bed. Been put in and it bottomed out. Yep. And uh, before I had a chance, somebody was calling me telling me, hey, thanks for getting them guys to go do it. I didn't have anything to do with it. I was I didn't even got the phone yet. You, but you said I'm welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so no, we we uh, we're we're watching them. Uh, they they typically will settle. We know that. That's why we put rock on to begin with. It's easier to fix that way. Um, but we've we've been watching that, especially after a little bit of moisture that tends to happen. So, yeah, I, I I'm pretty cautious about those things because you can drop a couple inches overnight and create a big problem. So doesn't matter how much you can back to it or whatever else it's still going to be the way but no we're, we're watching we're on it before i can pick up the phones yeah yeah Kudos. well we we got a call on a stop sign out here too that come to find out it was kdot well uh isaac had been getting calls he called me by the time i called kdot said hey we got to take take care of this morning already <laughs> so just you know one of those things but um so um that's all i really had unless you guys had anything um I think we'll have an executive session on potential litigation. I don't know how much you enjoy those. Yes. <coughs> Hopefully we'll be close can, I, can I say no? You can, but it won't help. Okay. There you go. Yes. That's true. You can say no, but it won't work. I move that we recess an executive session in order to discuss potential litigation uh, pursuant to KSA 75-4319B. Uh, for item two, consultation with our attorney, attorney client privilege with the commission. Uh, Bryce, Brad, Ashley, and time? 10 minutes. 10 minutes, so we will go from 135 to 145. So is there a second? Second by Commissioner Gehring. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carried 5-0. We will be back at 145. This conference is no longer being recorded. It says it's still recording. Gotcha. We've got to shut the meeting down. There we go. Is it down? Yeah. Okay. You just don't want this recording? It says it is. Okay, now it's recording. This conference will now be recorded. We're out of executive session. No decisions made. Uh, Bryce, anything else? No, that's. Yes, she had much kids have anything. All right, I see the sun's out. So that's a good sign. Thank you. That rain on Thursday. Yep. Yeah, gotcha. get ready for that rain. Gotcha. <laughs> you said it, not I me. Know. All right. Um, I'd like to go into an executive session to discuss potential real estate purchase. So I move we recess the executive session in order to discuss potential real estate acquisition pursuant to KSA 75 4319 b Item six, preliminary discussion, acquisition of real estate with the commission and Brad. Second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 
five and oh. Oh, well, sorry, uh, uh, for 10 minutes. <laughs> sorry about that. 10 oh, minutes would be from 148 to 158. You'd have been hearing about it if we hadn't did that. Yes, I was close. Still, still I got an eye. Right. Second, Eden. Yes, Commissioner Hearing, second. And I still got an eye. 148 to 158. <laughs> This conference is no longer being recorded. Yep. Okay, we're good. Yep. I keep I keep logging in just to monitor. And that's good. good. And that one's off over there? No, no the red light is on. Red light's on. Flip the flip the thing shut. Okay, let's water. Look at those job. <laughs> Make fun of my nose? No. Thought we need two people meet at the door, somebody's nose might oh. be broken. That's a bad day. This conference will now be recorded. All right, we're out of executive session. No decisions made at this point. On the agenda, we go back to administrative items. We first have the draft financial statements. Yeah, and I think that was just for you guys to look at. Okay. It's been submitted to the auditors. Okay. Were there any questions or points that anyone wanted to discuss? A bunch of questions. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> Ash is ready with all the I think answers. just, uh, <laughs> you know, have everything ready. <laughs> I mean, it's good to go through each department. Yes. A good overview is to go to page 10. Okay. And uh, my, my main concern is a healthy general fund. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we need to really keep an eye on that. Okay. I said page 10. Mm -hmm. I think that we've, you know, we've had to raid general fund over the last few years right. for some items, especially when we got into that wet, wet year. And our one big thing is whenever you get a, a your rock budget over, mm -hmm. over budget. And uh, I think, you know, it was something we had to do. Yes. But. Well, in this past year, there were a number of major projects we pulled out of general also. Yeah, and we, you know, going forward with the inflation that we're looking at, we're going to, I think that needs to be watched very closely. Okay. Good point. A lot of information in there. Scott usually also provides a pretty good analysis, mm -hmm. particularly if you um, met him last time we talked. Uh, he will, if you get your request, provide even more detail than he does. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that kind of makes everybody glaze over. I know it has me in the past, but um, there's an awful lot of good analysis they can provide just based on experience. So. When do our valuation numbers come out? Like April? So I'm trying to, it varies a little bit from county to county, but around May. May, okay. I know Sedgwick, we usually don't, like Sedgwick County, don't uh, often count on getting them until June. From the beginning of June, it's that pretty is, close to what the budget Butler County so. already has theirs. Yeah. And some of them are really, early. I was talking to a <coughs> fellow banker in El Dorado this morning, and he said the valuation went out of the roof. Dickinson counties, I got a call from several of the city clerks, they're like, these things were supposed to go way up, and ours took a nosedive. And I, so they, theirs was really <laughs> unusual. Really? I haven't yet gotten an answer from the clerk over there, but I know, like you were saying, theirs were out already. Um, so some of them are a month and a half later than the others. Because of the housing market? Well, yeah. I mean, the value of the property in Butler County is just. Yeah. Of course, you can imagine when the when the western side is Andover. <laughs> and then Nikki mentioned that when they were getting here, what that was a number of months ago, about 
our potential issue and liability, and the state really hasn't been horribly sympathetic about, well, wait a minute, you've got these massive increases right now that nobody expects to be sustained. What do you want us to do on that regression analysis? And I, I just, don't know that anybody's got a good answer yet. I just had a talk with a few state people, and they seem to think it's the counties that are in charge of it. Yeah, course. and then suddenly, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, suddenly it's our problem. If it's a problem, but, it's But I, I, I pointed it back to them, several of them, all in one room, Yeah. that uh, that uh, no, it's really dictated by you guys mm -hmm. on what our appraiser has to do. So it's the rational people like the banks are going. Wait a minute, you might want to give some thought to whether you really want to consider that real value for purposes of borrowing. And I agree. There's some oh, of this. Well, it's just a phantom. It's going to evaporate. Well, I mean, even appraisers will admit to you they have a real struggle right now. Knowing what. <laughs> what to call it? Huge. Yeah. Well, I mean, what the market is, what it's really worth. Yeah. I mean, but they're, that's going to change yeah. again. Yeah. I think. But they're also tied to a three-year rather than it could be a ten. Right. And I, that could that could even out some of these hills and valleys. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they consider going to five, it could certainly help. Okay. All right. I got us off subject down the rabbit hole. I, I thought it was a to know when we can expect those numbers is probably May, June time. Yeah, yeah. at the latest. I think you right. can probably expect them. Because that does, that's where we start. Yeah. Last day. Uh, the last item we had on administrative business was the insurance rate costing. Mm -hmm. And Tina put together the analysis for the different options we had asked for. Uh, in particular, uh, raising the uh, life insurance from $5,000 to $15,000, which appears to be a very minimal cost and certainly a, a benefit to our employees where uh, 5000 just doesn't go very far. Uh, the other one being the increase of the county contribution to family uh, health insurance. And so you've seen those numbers. It looked like all the options came in would fit under the budget if I read it right. Mm -hmm. So my inclination would be to go with the increase in the life insurance, obviously, and then go with the higher of the two increases to family health insurance, which I believe, I believe would bring it from about 60% to closer to 75% kind of contribution. I think that actually has so those numbers up. I, I think I'm reading it right. We have a scenario one, <coughs> which is no cost increase for yes. employee and change county paid life to 15. Yes. That's the one you're... That's the first one. Uh, then we have scenario two. Yes. That's an increased county contribution on family by 10% mm -hmm. and then change to 15,000 life insurance. And then your scenario three, uh, increased county contribution on family by 20% mm -hmm. and then the 15,000 life. Right. I guess my, my inclination would be the third option. Scenario three, the scenario 20%. Three. Right. So still, what is that, the, what's the total hit there to the county then? Right here. $8,500 $8, or more. So we're talking about uh, oh, hundred grand yeah. a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty substantial. <laughs> Very in, substantial. In light of what are the number of employees and the impact that they're seeing right now, uh, you can look at it because my view has evolved, how is it sure, sure. my view pivoted uh, in light of new information. Uh, it's really a, you can look at it as an economic development tool, uh, helping our families that work for the county. Uh, how many, how many families do we have? It's, right. How many singles? There, it's on the sheet. Mm -hmm. Got more singles. Oh yeah, by far, by far. I just, I kind of struggle a little bit with that too because singles that's treating everybody equally and that's where I was that's where I was but again visiting with employees and looking at it from the standpoint of trying to attract families uh, it has a benefit to the county has benefit to the community it has a community <coughs> benefit 
to all, all people involved, school districts. Uh, if we can attract a, a good candidate with a young family, that has value to the county. And again, I don't want to diminish the value of, of someone that's on a single plan. And insurance is a very important part of people who look at jobs now. Yes, and I've heard that from Sometimes several Sometimes they don't look at the pay, yep. they look at the yep. insurance costs. Several department heads have had struggles, especially when they're trying to hire younger people. I know that over the last five years, though, and people I've been talking to, uh, their portion has been going up almost every year. Yep. And we've been trying to hold the line on that. Right. Right. So I think I think we've done a good job from yes. that perspective. Yes. Tina did mention you don't necessarily have to decide on which rates you yeah. want to go through yeah, with it today, a... but she does need to know if you want the fifteen thousand. Okay, yeah. why don't we split that up? Um, I'd make the motion to increase the the life benefit to fifteen thousand. So second by Commissioner Becker. Further discussion. If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carried five zero. That's the easy one. I would like the employees to. I'd like the employees to know that that's almost a mill of tax levy that we we're going to shift over to funds. Not quite a mill, but it's getting close. For just this, for from here on. For the health insurance. For the health insurance, yes. Why don't we think about it for a week? Okay, that'd be good. I mean, just my own opinion. Yep, yep. It's not, we don't have to decide today, but it's something that we want to discuss and we need to decide. But we can take a week to maybe another week and give us a little more input. Okay, very good. All right, with that, that completes the administrative agenda and the regular agenda. I'll open again for public forum if there are any public comments. I think we pretty much lost everybody online, <laughs> but, uh, other than the media. Uh, any commission comments? Yeah, I had a meeting earlier today uh, on the commission room upgrades. Um, getting close. Uh, should be next week. Should be okay. Something to, Good. To, uh, put out and try to go for RFPs. Okay, let's put it on the agenda for next week. Appreciate your work into getting something put together. So what about the merger issue plan? Uh, Tina met with uh, the consultants last, I believe it was last week, Friday, um, working on premium pay. And so hopefully she'll have a- We haven't signed a, the framework yet, have we? No, we haven't gone to the framework yet. How's that? I mean, that's no, a lot of paperwork. That first? Yeah. Oh, no, but yeah. yeah, that's part of the board. Yeah, and that's part of what they were, the, yeah, it's on our radar. So you want next week about the commission? Yes. Room? Yeah. It'd be the commission audio video system. I've got, I've got the documentation about ready to go. I just need to get it to Tina. So, it's, and so everybody else has a chance to yes. see it. Yes, yes. Get the, rather than just dumping them all on for everybody and expecting you to, nope, do a little homework first. Everybody a chance to review. Any other commission comments? If not, I guess I'm ready for a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Five and oh, we are adjourned. Thank you. I just made your motion, sir. That's fine. This conference is no longer being recorded. Yeah, we're still recording.